Hey guys, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. And we are on Acts chapter 6 today. Verse 1. Now at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint arose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews, because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. Hellenistic Jews were Jews who lived beyond the borders of Israel and could not speak Aramaic, which most Jews near Jerusalem could at that time. Native Jews could speak both Aramaic and Greek. Verse 2. So the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, It is not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. And this is why the body of Christ is so important. There are other supportive passages we'll eventually get to, but this is a good example of why um, the role of deacons in the body uh, matters. The pastor and elders are to focus on handling the ministry of the word and uh, key issues of the church, while the deacons are to handle the needs of the church to help the, free up the pastor and the elders. Okay, verse 4. But we, um, and that refers to the apostles, and it's really important also, I'm going to pause real quick, that we draw a distinguishing line between what an apostle is and what a disciple or a follower of Jesus is. They're two separate things, so we need to pay attention to that. All right, back to verse 4. But we uh, will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The statement found approval with the whole congregation, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, and once more, a proselyte is a person who converts from one religion to another. Verse six, <clears throat> verse 6. And these they brought before the apostles, and after praying, they laid their hands on them. The word of God kept on spreading, and the number of disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were becoming obedient to the faith. All right, really important here. The comment about the priests clearly shows that they were errant in trying to stick to the Old Testament ways of the Levitical priesthood after the death of Jesus. The new covenant had come, and the law had been fulfilled in Christ, so there was no longer need for animal sacrifice and actions from people to go to the priest on behalf of their sins. They could now approach God directly through faith alone in Jesus, and could talk to God because of Jesus, who became the one and only mediator necessary. As 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator also between God and man, men, the man Christ Jesus. So no longer need to go to a priest to get before God. Taking it a step further, 1 Peter chapter 2 says that followers of Christ are now the priesthood that offers spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church unfortunately does get it wrong trying to keep the role of the priest and having altars in the front of every church they build uh, to practice transubstantiation or a spiritual re-sacrifice of Christ. And I'm not making this up. Um, this is found in many of their doctrines, including uh, the Catechism of the Catholic Church in various uh, sections. It was written by John Paul, uh, Pope John Paul II, and um, it's an offense to God. Jesus died once and for all, and no more sacrifice needs to take place. If you really dig into the practices of the Catholic Church, they've really just mystified and reinstituted the Levitical priesthood after Jesus put it to a stop when um, he died, resurrected, and the temple was torn, in, the veil was torn in two. The evidence is available. I'm just exposing the truth, which is what I'm called to do. Verse 8. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was performing great wonders and signs among the people. All right, so once more we have a new authority figure uh, put in place for the early church, Stephen, and the great wonders and signs were permitted to display that uh, his authority was authentic, um, that he was a chosen leader of Christ for the first church to recognize and see. But some men from what was called the synagogue of the freedmen, including both Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and some, and some from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and argued with Stephen. But they were unable to cope with the wisdom and the spirit with which he was speaking. Then they secretly induced men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God, which is obviously a flat-out lie. Verse 12, And they stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, 
and they came up to him and dragged him away and brought him before the council. They put forward false witnesses who said, This man incessantly speaks against this holy place and the law, for we have heard him say that this Nazarene, Jesus, will destroy this place and alter the customs which Moses handed down to us. Another misstatement by the elders and scribes because uh, what they're referencing is Jesus' words displayed in the Gospel of John chapter 2, which was a reference to his own body. Verse 15, And fixing their gaze on him, all who were sitting in the council saw his face like the face of an angel. So, which would be likely calm and collected, reflecting the Spirit of God within him. So, good stuff, guys, and it's important. And I know uh, maybe there's some people out there watching that get their feathers ruffled a little bit. Hey, I'm just here to be, speak the truth. And uh, I, I urge you to look into it and see if what I'm saying is true, because I've looked into it for many years. And I uh, hope you come to the same conclusion. All righty. Well, I just want my whole goal in life is to make sure that everybody knows the real gospel of Christ, which uh, requires no works on our behalf, but is uh, through faith in what Christ did on the cross alone. There's no level of achievement or merit we can do to earn our salvation. All the credit goes to Christ, and in faith we follow him. So, all right. God bless you, and have a good day.